What's up, Juicer here, and today I'd like to show you how I crafted my explosion chest and my Tailwind uh, Elusive Boot. So at first I wasn't really sure how much into detail I really wanted to go. Uh, if I was going to do an Eli 5 type of thing, or here's what I did, you figure out the rest kind of deal. Since it's been a while since I've done a Pass of Exile for Dummies episode, I decided to go with the uh, ELI 5. Having said that, this will cost you a lot of money, and if you want to perfect the item, it is going to cost you tons of exalts. Or, you can get lucky. Which, technically I did, even though I didn't exactly get what I wanted myself. Uh, actually, no, no, um, I got really lucky. Let's start with a uh, small introduction. So I'm not a big crafter. I very much do prefer to craft items myself rather than buying them because it's a lot more fun and when you actually do get what you want there's a lot of satisfaction in the end. So a very helpful and important website for crafting is uh, poedb.tw. So for an example let's have a look at belt. So we click on mods and we then go on jewelry and then belts. So here you can see every possible affix sorted by prefix and suffix. A uh, TLDR for affixes is basically life and energy shield and damage is prefixes, resists and stats are suffixes. Uh, any item can only have a max of six affixes, consisted by three prefixes and three suffixes. An item can never have four prefixes and two suffixes, for instance. An item can only have a maximum of three prefixes and three suffixes, totaling six affixes. Each affix also has different tiers, so if we, for example, click on life, we see that it has ten different tiers, and we can also see which item level is required to hit each tier. Something important I want to mention while we're here is the use of divine orbs. You can use a divine orb to change the numbers within the tier, but you cannot divine out of a tier. So if you have like tier 5 life, you cannot use a divine orb to hit tier 1. You can only divine, um, if you have tier, tier 5, you can only divine between 40 and 49. And if you're on like the rotund tier, you can only divine between 60 and 69. So basically you can only divine within the tier you are currently in. We can also see here there are certain mods locked to specific influence. For example, we can only ever find increased maximum life on elder influence. They do exist on incursion as well. But incursion is not a base item from which we can roll the mod with alterations or chaos orbs. So I craft maybe two to three items per league, and by that I mean alterations into regals, into exalts, and then metacrafting. As an example, here is a uh, iron will belt from last league I crafted, which include what is called metacrafting. I got an elder base, that's where you get the percent attributes from. I then used alterations until I hit either tier 1 strengths or tier 1 attributes. I would then use an augment, and if it hit a good augment, in this case I was looking for tier 1 or maybe even just tier 2 energy shield, I would then regal and hope I hit either um, strengths or attributes. What actually happened was I hit tier 1 strengths along with uh, tier 9 energy shield. Uh, regal just for the hell of it, honestly, I uh, shouldn't have, but I did, and I managed to hit tier 1 attributes. I then beast an ult. I use the recipe that removes one random prefix and adds a random suffix. In this case I only have one prefix, so removing the energy shield is guaranteed. The random added suffix in this case was tier 4 cold res. Which isn't amazing, but it also isn't awful. Uh, we now have filled every suffix on the belt, which means I cannot do the beast and all again. While the recipe can remove a prefix, it also needs to be able to add a suffix. What I can do is craft suffixes cannot be changed, which is actually a prefix, and prefixes cannot be changed is a suffix. 
They're mirrored in this case. I craft suffixes cannot be changed and then use a orb of scouring which because of the crafted mod will only remove the prefixes leaving my strengths and attributes intact, removing the energy shield. So at this point I can keep trying to hit a uh, tier 1 energy shield as long as I have exalts, however I got insanely lucky and managed to hit tier 1 energy shield straight away. The use of uh, prefixes suffixes cannot be changed is basically what's called metacrafting. Now, let's move on to the boots I crafted. So as you can see, I have Tailwind and Elusive. Tailwind is a Hunter Influence specific mod and Elusive is a Redeemer Influence specific mod. So how can I have both? This is because of the help of something called Awakener's Orb, which can transfer one influence onto another item. So what I did was I bought two pairs of boots, one with uh, Hunter's Influence and one with Redeemer's Influence. I also decided on the base of the boots, which I wanted to be Slink Boots because they have the highest base evasion. Which for the crafting itself has of no importance, but rather for the build it was meant for. Which influence my preferred base has doesn't really matter. I made sure the Redeemer boots were of at, at least item level 75 because that is the minimum requirement to spawn Elusive. I made sure my Hunter boots had an eye level of at least 75 because that's the minimum requirement to spawn Tailwind. However, in case we hit life or resist or movement speed along with it, we should also look at the highest tier eye level for those as well. For tier 1 life, we only need item level is 54. For tier 1 resists, we need item level 84. For tier 1 movement speed, we need item level 86. However, personally, 30% would be good enough, which is eye level 55. So the lowest eye level boots I should buy is 84. We should also consider if our dream scenario even exists. So we're looking for life, movement speed, resist, tailwind, and elusive. So life is a prefix, movement speed is a prefix, resists are suffixes, tailwind is a suffix, elusive is a prefix. That means for a dream scenario, we can hit everything along with two resists. The problem here though is that should we end up with an awful result, we can't really metacraft because the two mods we truly care about is a suffix and a prefix. So we basically only have one shot. So for the Redeemer boots it took about 400 alterations to hit Elusive. For the Hunter boots it took about 8000 alterations to hit Tailwind. I then regaled both. I honestly don't know if they at this point have to be rare, but with the Awakener's Orb they're reforged as a rare, so if someone could clarify this. I also haven't actually tried combining um, two blues. Something very important to note before using the Awakener's Orb is that the reforged item can only have one uh, influence mod per item, totaling two. If it has more, it will pick one at random. So let's say your Hunter's Boot has Tailwind and Increased Strength. Uh, it will then pick one of them at random. So to make sure you're getting the mods you want, you uh, need to make sure in this case that Tailwind is the only Hunter mod on the Hunter Boots and Elusive is the only Redeemer mod on the Redeemer Boots. So when everything's ready, we use the Awakener's Orb on the base we do not want. We then use it on the base we do want. My result wasn't ideal, but it wasn't completely awful either. But I knew I had to gamble here. The 10% movement speed just had to go. So I used an orb of annulment, hoping to get rid of the movement speed. This way I could multi-mod life and movement speed. However, if I were to annul either Tailwind or Elusive, I would have to start all over again. So the estimate cost up to this point on the boots were uh, 2,500 chaos-ish. Now I'm a lucky fucktart this league, so I managed to run all the movement speed and I multi-modded the rest. Alright, let's have a look at how I crafted the explosion chest. What I wanted on the chest was uh, explosion, attack crit and spell crit, because this was meant for a cast on crit build. The spell crit was uh, the dream scenario, but it wasn't the most important stat of them all. 
Enemies you kill explode is a Crusaders only mod requiring item level 85. Attacks to critical strike chance is an Elder and Hunter mod only. So I could go with either Elder or Hunter. However, I wanted a shot at the spell crit as well. So I went with Hunter. Item level, item level requirement is 84 for this mod. So I bought a non-influenced six link astral plate because I wanted the implicit of a 12% all res. However, I soon came to realize I'm never gonna be able to hit the required strength requirement to wear it. So I sold it and I bought a sadist garb instead. A hybrid evasion was gonna be a lot easier to chrome for just about every build I felt. And also the stat requirement aren't that high. I then bought a Hunter's Exalted Orb, I alked the Sadis Garb, make, made sure it had one affix open, used the Hunter's Exalted Orb to turn it into a Hunter-influenced item, I then scoured it and then transmute and used alterations until I hit the attack crit mod. Uh, took about 100 alterations, maybe less, probably. I then bought a random item level 85 Crusader chest piece, cheapest I could find, Used about a thousand alterations to the ex explosion mod. I then used the Awakeness Orb on the Crusader piece and then on the Six Link Hunter Influence chest piece. Now, uh, if you look at the clip in the background, uh, you'll see that my Sadist Garb was actually the Crusader and the uh, random chest piece was the Hunter. Uh, I just don't want to rewrite the script and I, it literally doesn't matter as long as um, what I say is consistent. The end result was amazingly lucky. Uh, I crafted percent life and mana and then slammed the last suffix hoping for a resist or spell crit. But the game felt I've had enough and gave me life regen instead. So, thank you for watching. I hope I taught someone something. Uh, if you find any errors or anything, you know, do leave a comment down below and I will see you next time.